Okay, we are going back to playing as Kane at the Vampire Citadel. Ah, shit. Ah! Things need to die. Seriously? Alright, I'm not going that way. Going this way. direction am I going? <laughs> Not here. Oh jeez, I'm bumbling this one up right off the bat, aren't I? Oh, wait. <laughs> Hello. first. Okay, we got a jumper up here. He's still alive, damn it. Come on. Facing a wall. Tell me somebody glitched into the frickin' uh whatever. Jump! vampires began to die out, the pillars summoned human guardians to fulfill their roles. It seemed the ancient vampires had adopted, and when necessary, abducted the human guardians and made vampires of them when they came of age, until the humans rebelled against their masters. And here, I made a surprising discovery. It was Mobius, the time streamer, and Mortanius, guardian of death, who led the bloody revolt. Now, I understood why Mobius hated me so intensely. I was the first vampire guardian in all these centuries, and he knew what my coming signified. Or perhaps, I reminded him of all he had forsaken. Well, but, uh... Not to say that that doesn't make sense or anything, because we knew very well that Mobius hated vampires. And him leading the sort of uh, rebellion against them is something that makes perfect sense. But Mortanius is a little bit of a different story. We haven't really seen anything out of Mortanius in the past, and in reality, uh, his. Uh, his en where entire experience with him is based on the first blood omen, you know. Shit, I'm pushing the wrong button. Yeah, back in Blood Omen, it was actually Mortanius which resurrected Cain as a vampire. Something that uh, probably would have pissed off Mobius if it wasn't for the fact that Mobius was more of a big picture fellow and he saw the saw Cain being resurrected as an opportunity to destroy other vampires. Yep. Ah, alright. Uh... There we go. Yeah, that made sense. <laughs> Get up there. Another warp the orb that once opened this portal had been destroyed. To power it, I would need to find a substitute. Ah, here we go. The 
freaking vampire guardian things. Just, uh, sort of, while they're attacking, stay out of their way until the red shield disappears and then you can go and hit them all you want. Although they will, uh, they will counterattack, and it's a little difficult to avoid their counterattack if you're caught in the process of it, uh, like, uh, trying to unleash a combo. Then, uh, so, what you're best better off doing is sort of hitting it a few times and then backing off. Like, back off. I mean, you've seen me take these things on before, so I don't really need to explain strategy. I'm just trying to talk a little bit while I'm um, battling a competitive enemy. Yeah, it's dead. Find an orb! Find an orb! Oh shit, not what I wanted to do. <laughs> First you have to break down the floor right under the... Uh, where, oh, there it is. Of course, we don't really know exactly how Mortanius managed to resurrect Cain as a vampire. But, I mean, there were, by the time Cain was resurrected, there were actually a number of vampires in the world. Uh, Vorador was one of them. Janos was... Well, he would have been dead by that point. But there were other vampires in the world. Uh, in Vorador's mansion back in... Blood Omen, there were, uh, were a number of vampires that Kane encountered in that place. But, I mean, you don't really... And exactly what the process is in this world of a vampire going and creating another one is... not terribly well understood, because they don't really... they didn't really go into much explanation with that. Only thing that they ever really mentioned was... Cade was able to resurrect uh, the Seraphan by sort of breathing his soul into them. Which seems like an atypical solution to the problem. And Cain in Blood Omen 2 mentions that Vorador was able to create vampires essentially doing something that Cain himself was unable to do. Essentially to rebuild the vampire armies and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, it's... I mean, it's easy to assume that vampires are sort of the... Did I just go back through the door I was in already? Oh, jeez, I thought I saw an opening on the side. Damn camera angles. One would assume that in order to make a vampire, you need a vampire. And if that's not the case, then... Then why? And if that is the case, how the hell did Mortanius manage to do it? There isn't an opening on this side? Okay, what I gotta do is gotta be over there. I'm gonna cut the camera until I figure it out. It's gotta have something to do with this. Simple. Just had to jump through the damn thing. Wow, that was such a simple solution. Why the hell didn't I think of it? Something wrong with me here. things. Take it. Earth globe. It didn't look much like a globe to me. Hmm. Of course, this is all areas that Raziel has been to before. Seem to be going through a pattern of Raziel passing through an area, then Kane passing through it later on in the game. But, um, of course, because of this weird time discrepancy thing we've been encountering. Maybe I could take this orb. Ah, shit, no. Uh, uh, don't go through there. Ah, damn it. <laughs> go back through. <laughs> Guess I can't take that. Of 
Because because of this weird uh, thing where Raziel and Kane are in different periods of time. Hmm. All right. Kane is actually in this place before Raziel. Remember, uh, Kane is still existing in the time in the time frame in which the end of Blood Omen Two occurred. Ah, oh, you sons of bitches! I'm gonna kill all of you. <laughs> Which was a few hundred years before the start of the game Blood Omen. Soul Reaver 2 takes place... At the end of Soul Reaver 2 takes place a few hundred years before the time frame of the first Blood Omen. Now, uh, so Kane is still at that point in history. 500 years or whatever it was before the start of the first game and... Raziel be, having been trapped in the Elder Gods prison for all that time still exists in that uh, didn't get out until the time approximately when um, the first Blood Omen game took place as uh, certain events were being referenced such as Avernus being on fire something that happened in the first game also uh, they mentioned how the vampires have been killed, and Vorador is the last one. He's being hunted. Eventually, they will find him and kill him. This much we can tell for sure. Ah, uh, okay. Jump, jump, jump! Hold on. Uh, what do I got here? Hmm. I'm screwing something up here. <laughs> This wasn't the, uh, the portal I jumped through before, was it? Ah, look at that. Yeah, I don't think this is the portal I jumped through earlier. So, let's give that a try. Yeah, we're somewhere else. Of course, uh, the problem that all of these damn places look the same just keeps... <laughs> oh, jeez. Nice jump. Somebody's throwing shit at me. things are just starting to throw more and more of them at me at this point. What was in here? Nothing? It's a waste of time. Try the other way. Nothing? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go. Oh, geez, there are the vampire guardians and the vampire hunters down here. What the hell? Why aren't they trying to kill each other? <laughs> Jump. Damn it. <laughs>
Refill. Oh, there are two of them. Damn it. <laughs> Can't see anything. Hey, I like this. Ah. Uh. I, I have no idea if they liked it or not, because I can't see shit. <laughs> I think maybe in uh, I would have done a little bit better level design. Not had something that could appear in front of the camera. In a fairly fixed camera setup, I mean, seriously. Uh, repeated knockdowns. I feel like I'm playing... Uh, what was the... Uh, what was that Star Wars game where... You, get knocked down a bunch of times, and before you get a chance to stand back up, they knock you down again. Ah, whatever. This one's dead, I think. Hello. Stop pushing the wrong button. Keep forgetting what my uh, key map setup was. Of course, it's a puzzle thing that Raziel would have had to have done. Or Raziel will do in the future. Sort of a weird kind of crap you gotta think about here. I guess all of the goats that Raziel encountered of the old vampire pillar guardians really only could occur in the spectral realm. Which will explain why Kane is not encountering them here. Dying faster. What are these things supposed to be, anyway, I wonder? Okay, we're not getting through there. Hmm, I guess these are all things... can't really quite remember if Raziel commented on these or not. But that doesn't matter. Oh, here we go. Hello. Of course. Alright, let's do this. You suck. Watch out, they're both are attacking at different times. <laughs> Trying to get too many attacks in, that's why I'm getting beat. Can't be greedy. Apparently they can hit each other. They are. Okay, let's try this. How do you like that shit? <laughs> Surprised that one died first. This is the one I've hit more, I think. Okay, I got my sphere of power or whatever the hell it's called. Oh, hey, there we go. Got me some more juice. Jump! Let's 
Seriously? Where are you guys coming from? How are you not dying? <laughs> Hit you with this gigantic friggin' flame burge sword and you're not dying. That was a, a feature of the first Blood Omen game. If once you got the Soul Reaver, almost every enemy you encountered, including some of the bosses you would encounter, would die from one hit with the Soul Reaver. Now I guess technically this isn't actually the Soul Reaver, this is the um, the Blood Reaver, because it hasn't had Raziel's soul in infused into it yet. But still, I mean, come on. Anyway, uh, 21 minutes, I'm going to end the episode when I go through this. Thanks for watching.